Uh, on the morning of September 11th, 2001, uh, I was driving into work. I was working across town at the Boston Globe, and I was driving into work and listening to the radio when uh, I heard news of the planes that had hit the World Trade Center, first the one and then the second. The first one seemed like an accident, you know, and the second one, I knew that the world had changed. I knew that we were in for, um, I mean, I'm a news person, and so I made, immediately tried to um, understand the, the portent of such a, such a thing, and I knew that it was a terrorist attack and that this, I had no idea that it was Al-Qaeda uh, or that there was a Middle East connection because we had just come off the war in um, Bosnia and Kosovo. So there could have been other sources. There had also been in the 1990s the attack on Oklahoma City uh, by um, you know, uh, uh, Timothy um, McVeigh and uh, these, uh, these American um, uh, extremists. So no one exactly knew, but, uh, but the significance of the attack on Manhattan just seemed to be like what my father might have felt when Pearl Harbor was attacked. It was a major change in the way everybody was going to be thinking and grappling with the world. And here we are ten years later and we're still dealing with it, which is the legacy of um, the war on terrorism, the, uh, the invasions of uh, Afghanistan and of uh, Iraq, uh, now possibly the fallout in the Arab world of the Arab Spring, uh, the economy, which in some ways has probably been affected by uh, all of this, um, all of the upset that's happened over the past decade. So clearly 9-11 was a huge tragedy. It was a tragedy for individuals. I had a friend whose father was on one of the planes that hit the World Trade Center. And uh, it was a tragedy for the, the nation and the world. We've recovered somewhat from it. That's good. But uh, we're living with a legacy and we'll be living with it for quite a long time. It, it was just an ordinary morning and uh, I was working on the opinion page and um, we noticed because uh, someone said uh, a plane has flown into the, to the trade, World Trade Center and uh, I remember our editorial cartoonist had kind of said something to me from his office and um, that's when we were start watching the, the banks of the TVs and, and uh, we saw the second plane fly into the World Trade Center and we thought we were watching a replay. Uh, we hadn't realized quite at first that it was, um, you know, a, a second plane. And uh, it was right at that moment, um, I think it was at 9 in the morning, and uh, I can't remember that, <laughs> but, you know, we were pushing toward our, our morning deadline and we had suddenly had to pause and figure out what was going on. And you always know when there's a big news event because the entire newsroom is, is standing. Usually everyone's tucked into their cubbies, but um, the entire newsroom was on their feet trying to figure out what we were, how we were going to respond. And uh, it, was, it was really remarkable. Um, I can't remember exactly what happened in the, the moments of follow because they kind of flowed over the course of 10 days and we ended up working uh, 10 days straight through the weekend to, to um, put out a, a special edition that, that was a, a narrative through, through the whole events and giving the monitors perspective how, how, should, how should we respond, asking the big questions, you know, why do they hate us, um, who, who is behind this? How, how is America going to unite and, and respond to this? this? Um, and it, it was such an incredible sense of teamwork. You had everyone from interns to our most seasoned veteran reporters in New York uh, coming together around this story. And it was just a, such an honor to be part of the Monitor team at, at that moment because nothing else was important. You know, we were bringing in pizza to get us through the, the long hours in the evening. and um, But this is where everyone wanted to be. They didn't want, it wasn't like we needed to get home and do our, have other lives. This was the most important moment. And uh, I think we, we gave our readers a sense of, um, there's, a, there's a way through this. We, we showed a path, or there, there's a way that we can face evil head on and uh, report on, on what's going on and, and, and 
but still encourage that civilization is moving forward. This isn't the end. This isn't the end of the world. So. I found out about 9-11 on at the end of a long day of reporting. We were in Kabul, Afghanistan, uh, myself and Robert Harbison, photographer. Um, I've just filed my story uh, for the day, and I talked with my wife just to find out what was going on. She said, Scott, a couple of planes have hit the uh, hit the World Trade Center, and like many people, I thought, well, Piper Cup, what, how bad could it be? But then it became very clear later on that evening we had to go to a press conference with the Taliban um, to assure the, the world that they had nothing to, to do with the attack, um, and it also became very clear that that country was now going to be embroiled in a war. And uh, people were quite scared. In the marketplace, uh, the Taliban themselves looked terrified. Um, and as a reporter in my first war zone, I was terrified too. So that was my experience of 9-11. Uh, so on 9-11, I was at a monitor breakfast in the basement of the St. Rita's Hotel, two blocks, two blocks from the White House in Washington. And uh, it was a Democratic consultant named Bob Shrum who looked at his Blackberry and said, a second plane just hit the tower. And a couple of minutes after that, Peter Greer, who's our senior Washington correspondent, came into the room and grabbed me and the other monitor reporters, and as we were walking across the street back to the bureau, he said, this is going to be the biggest story of our generation. Well, newsrooms, as you can imagine, are both frenetic and fascinating places during major events. And, uh, you know, I was in this newsroom in 1981 with the uh, resolution of the Iran hostage crisis. I was here with the bombing of the federal building in Oklahoma City. I was here for the impeachment of a president, the start of several wars, and many other major events. But there's no question on that morning of September 11th, the moment that plane hit the building, we all knew instantly this was a singular moment in American history. We had to mobilize quickly in the newsroom. We had very early deadlines. We had only about three hours to put out the stories, while everybody else would have pretty much all day to do it. So we organized all of the domestic bureaus, a lot of the foreign bureaus, and we organized around three major themes that we thought fit who we are as a paper and the amount of time we had to put it out. Uh, the main theme was what basically the implications of this were in the grand scheme of things for the United States, what it would mean for our foreign policy, what it would mean for security for the country, uh, what it would mean economically and politically. Um, we did a second story on what it would mean for New York. New York, as we all know, is the financial capital of the world, but it's also sort of the urban capital of the United States, and this had huge implications for them getting back on their feet and how they would cope with it, so we organized around that. And the third story was a look at this as a moment. We wanted to kind of see where Americans were mentally as this happened. So we, we asked people what they thought, and we knew they would remember this, like they remember in Pearl Harbor, the assassination of John F. Kennedy. This would be something that would always be a reference point in their thinking, and we wanted to sort of capture that. And I think that first day we did some stories that stood up very well for our tight deadlines and in many respects put the event in the grander sweep of history than most newspapers did. Uh, when 9-11 happened, I was in eighth grade. I was 13. And uh, I don't really remember too much about it because it didn't, the significance of it didn't really hit me and my friends. I remember being in class and TVs being on and the teachers focusing on the TVs and all the class changes being canceled and we just kept talking and doing our own thing because it didn't really mean anything to us. We didn't know what Al-Qaeda was. We didn't know who Osama bin Laden was. We didn't know any of this. And uh, it's the 10th anniversary now and me and my peers haven't ever really known a world without uh, war in Afghanistan, the war in Iraq, and all the repercussions of 9-11 uh, because we were so young when it happened. We were just beginning to maybe wake up to the world that was beyond our friends and our community.